What's up, everybody? My name is Kason. Welcome back to the WDL. This is season two, week seven. It is super hard to believe that we are this far along in our league, but we are. We are in the final trimester of our season two WDL. So before we hop into these five best of threes that we've got for you guys today, let's take a look at the Rundall standings. First place, we've got Coppola's team, the Gnostics, with 18 points. Absolutely been running teams over all season long. Perfect 6-0-0 series record. Second place, we've got Machin X and the Shoebuff Sweetheart. Not far behind 16 points 501 record he also plays against the Gnostics in the last week so he is still in control of his own destiny for that first seed Willie goes in the Corpse Brigade 13 points trying to hang on to that playoff spot ended up taking a close loss to Surf Taco in the Supreme's last week can he bounce back this week against Coppola and the Gnostics he's gonna have a very tough challenge fourth place Sand Rooster and Bohemian Rhapsody 12 points if the playoff set started right now he would be the final team making it but it doesn't start right now we got three more weeks so case on and the Demon Detectives, that's my team, along with Surf Taco and Superines in a two-way tie currently for fifth place at 11 points. All smoked up in the Gumi Gods with 10 points. And most likely, that's kind of where the playoff, you know, kind of area ends. Uh, King Delita, King Delita, excuse me, in eighth place. Black Sheep Knights with five points. Mr. Aloha and the Pineapple Pizza with four. And Unhindered and the Storm Reborn with zero. We are trying to see what teams make that top four for the final playoffs. The other teams will be in the Toilet Bowl and will compete in their own competition. Either way, it should be a heck of a lot of fun. But we've got a bunch of matches to get into. So let's just go check them out. All right, guys, our first matchup preview of week seven on the left side, we've got Surf Taco of the Guild Dead Society, coach of the Supereens versus Unhindered of the Guild Eurekan Ward, coach of the Storm Reborn. This should be an interesting matchup. Unhindered yet has not scored any points. He is really, really trying to get on the board this week. It should be an interesting matchup. For, so for Surf Taco, he's got Perrine, he's got Shadow Links on Ice, Lucia Halloween, Summer Elsie, Aerith, Halloween, Frederica, Whisper, Elshra, Ramada, Little Leela, and Winter Venera was his supplemental draft pick. And on the Storm Reborn side, we've got Esther, Pissarro, More the Merrier, Little Leela, Halloween, Rain, Tifa, Frederica, Phoebe, Sosha, Mish, and his newer unit, Yurel. Things that I expect to see from this matchup. Just looking a quick glance at the Supereens, obviously has a lot of water on his team. Now, Lightning might seem kind of enticing uh, for Unhindered to play, but Surf Taco very specifically did draft Winter Venera for some of those Lightning matchups that he could run into. So he has the Winter Venera and Halloween Fred that he can run together, or just running just one of them, you know, if he thinks he's going to run into some of those Lightning comps. Realistically, if I had to guess a team that Surf Taco is going to bring out, I think it's his most played team that he has run all season. It's the Lucia Halloween, Aerith, and Little Leela combo. I think this for a few reasons. For one, Little Leela just got her 140, and if you guys are unaware or of our rules um, in our league on how we are treating 140s, is that we agreed to this at the very start of the season, is that basically if your unit gets the ability to Dream Enhance, get to level 140, you can take them to 140 one time, but you are not allowed to reincarnate for additional stats. So you can transcend them or whatever, you know, get that Dream ability, get them to level 140, you can't keep doing it over and over and over again. So that is the rule that we decided at the very beginning of the season, and that's how it's going to go. So that being said, Little Leela gets a really nice upgrade with her level 140. She gets um, even higher percentage chance on her silencing uh, ability, so that could be very strong against some of the mages on Unhindered side, like Little Leela Halloween or something. Actually, I, I say that, I think Little Leela Halloween has 50 silence resists, so it might not be super effective against her, but regardless, I would not be surprised to see the Little Leela Halloween Lucia and Aerith combo. The reason I say that is because Halloween Lucia is very good against physical units. Um, she has guaranteed hits in her kit in case Unhindered brings somebody like Pissarro or Tifa as like an invasion angle. And honestly, I think she just matches up well against his team and you don't have to worry about playing that, you know, kind of like musical chairs, whatever you want to call it, with the elemental guessing game, right? And on hin unhindered side, I'm curious to see what he brings. I could see him bring Little Leela Halloween for the reason I said. I think she does start with 50 silence resist, which is very nice against Little Leela. She also brings magic damage to hopefully try and get through that Halloween Lucia. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see somebody like Rain. I think if he brings a physical unit, I think it's got to be somebody with a barrier break. I think Pissarro and Esther both have those. I'm not sure if Yorel does. I don't think she does, but she she very well might. Um, Sosha definitely has a barrier break, so I would not be surprised to see Sosha as well. And 
honestly, from Surf Taco and Superines, maybe he does get spicy. Maybe he goes with the double earth to try and counter lightning, but I think Unhindered could easily read that with some wind of his own. So it should be an interesting matchup, guys. Let's go check it out. All right, guys, game number one of our first series today. On the left side, we've got Unhindered showing that Sosha pick and Surf Taco on the right showing that Little Leela. So a couple of units that I did kind of expect for this series. We'll have to see. So it is Sosha, Esther, Little Leela, Halloween. So Esther does have a barrier break, and it is that team that I described from Surf Taco's side. I think this is probably his safest option as a game one lead, as Halloween Lucia is going to walk into the party, get that AoE buff online, as long as the magic shield along with the magic shield, excuse me, from Aerith. And Magnetic Force going to come out from Esther. That magic shield from Aerith is such a nice combo with the Lucia Halloween, as Lucia Halloween has her own physical health shield, and then Aerith drops a, like, three-time magic hit shield on top of her, so she just has so many good things going for her. Those do synergize very well. Little Leela Halloween's going to pop the Black Rose Helen a TMR to get her own three-hit shield online. And the more the merrier TMR coming out from Halloween Lucia is a very effective thing against magic damage as well. We've seen Surf Taco bust this out before, gives Shell critical evasion. And a TMR that we are very familiar with in the WDL is the Rob Horn TMR Keen Blade. Bell's coming out online for Esther. She's going to have tons of AP during this fight. And Little Leela is getting out in front. This is very good for Surf Taco, trying to get that tank out. And she does start with hate due to her new 140 as well. Some damage coming out from Little Leela Halloween. She's a pretty effective magic tank, especially with those steroids that Aerith is giving her. But 2600 damage isn't too bad. And now the more the merrier TMR is going to be refreshed from Halloween Lucia. Sosha going to jump up, though. Is this the barrier break? Is this silencing? Sosha has a lot of good techs in her jump abilities. I'm curious to see what this is. Esther, can she hit? This could do a lot of damage. Little Leela is not the bulkiest unit against physical damage. Bunny Bolt Blitz going to come out. Absolutely disgustingly cool animation. How much damage does this do? 1695 on a crit. I expect Sosha to kill her here. She does. Silencing Jump comes out. Little Leela is going to drop, but she does have the re-raise. I forgot Aerith popped the re-raise on her. And that upgraded re-raise that Aerith also gets from her 140. So a couple of 140 units here. She actually comes back with more health than she used to on the re-raise, but level 4 Aeroga? Oh yeah, that's way more than enough to kill little Leela. It is now a 2v3. What can Halloween Lucia, though? Big AoE. She takes out Sosha. Two are still left alive, though, and crucially, this uh, little Leela Halloween is not silenced. That silence did not hit her from the little Leela earlier. We've got Leela on Leela combat. Bolting Impact comes out from Esther, takes out the Aerith in the back line. It is now a 2v1 in Unhindered's favor. Can he possibly win this? Halloween Lucy is still very healthy. Takes out the Halloween little Leela. Esther's going to have to one-shot with her barrier break ability. Can she get into range for this? She goes for Surging Storm. I don't think that is the barrier break ability. I don't think. That was only 2,800 damage. It looks like uh, Halloween Lucy is going to take him, take Esther out. That was a heck of a game one, though. Uh, honestly, that might be the closest game that Unhindered's had all season. He's had some really close ones, so I'm, I'm not entirely sure about that. But that was a juicy game one. Um, I'm curious to see what the other, what the guys bring out for game two. I know Surf Taco a lot of times likes to switch up his comp after a win. Uh, he That's just like typically a strategy he likes, he go, likes to go with. And then I think if it doesn't work, he likes to try and pivot back. So I would not be shocked if he changes it. Does he go with an Earth comp based on seeing Esther in game one? Wouldn't be shocked. And from Unhindered side, does he keep this the same comp going and try and tweak a couple little things? Because I think that team did work fairly well. Or does he decide to go with something like Rain to try and mitigate that damage that Halloween Lucia did? It'll be really, really interesting. Let's jump into game two and see what these guys brought for us. Game number two of our first series today. We've got Halloween Frederica coming up from Surf Taco. He is yet to use her. She, he has had her since the very beginning of the season, has not used her once, and that is a Halloween little Leela on the left side from Unhindered. Okay, so this is going to be interesting. So this is Halloween little Leela, Rain Phoebe versus Halloween Frederica and Aerith and... Elstra, excuse me. I had to double check who that <laughs> that other unit was. The magic shield still coming out from Aerith, trying to mitigate that magic damage. Unhindered's going to have a lot of magic damage from this side, too. Swapping out the Esther for the rain. I legitimately think this fight is going to come down to one specific thing. 
And can Halloween Little Leela consistently hit the Halloween Fred? If she can, I think Unhindered wins this. If she can't, then it's probably over. Because I imagine this is probably a pretty dodgy Halloween Fred. So we'll have to see. I know that Halloween um, L Little Leela, excuse me, there's too many Halloween units in this series. Let me tell you, keeping those straight is incredibly difficult. Three different Halloween uh, units among all these teams here. But I know that Little Leela has an upgraded accuracy ability. Like, I think it gives, like, plus 30 to accuracy on one of her moves. I'm not entirely sure which one that is. A re-raise plus comes out from Aerith. So, Halloween Fred is online. She is hasted up. She's got re-raise. And Phoebe actually goes for Quicken, not uh, the haste or the speed force. Rain is actually out of buff. So, he's going to walk forward. He is the tank, though. But he is a much better magic tank than physical tank. Carving Carnival comes out. This also has a chance to blind. I don't remember what the percentage is. 6,400 is a lot, and it also does blind. Brain is... I can't imagine he's going to be able to hit this Halloween Fred. Hype base cure comes out from Little Leela, though. Mitigates the damage completely. So that's not bad. Else we're going to channel something. Now, is this a haste on herself, or is this a quicken onto Fred? This is a quicken. Oh, man. Is this double double quicken strats coming out from Surf Taco here with a hasted Halloween Fred? Displacer comes out, one-shots the Phoebe. That is not good for Unhindered. Halloween Little Lila is going to have to do a lot of damage very quickly because there's still a re-raise on Halloween Fred right now. Razor's Edge kills the rain. And this Halloween Fred is actually putting in a show. What do you got, Halloween Little Lila? She's thinking... Oh my god, she turned. Level 4 Aeroga. I don't think that is the uh, increased skill or increased attack chance. I, well, I Does she have that ability turned off? I'm surprised she didn't go for that. I'm pretty sure she has a move in her kit that has an upgraded uh, hit chance. But Drain Flurry comes out. That is going to break that barrier. I know Little Lila was using the Black Cross Helena TMR. That thing is now gone. And even with the elemental disadvantage, I just don't know how you get through this. Aerith has white mage skills. She has another, I imagine, quicken coming out here, unless it's damage. But can little Leela kill the backline as this is going on and take a couple hits? I don't know. Probably too much area resist from Aerith. She's also still got that magic barrier on. Another quicken. Halloween Fred might take it right here. Can she kill from here? I'm not sure. No, she cannot. She's going to need at least another one of those due to the elemental disadvantage, but... Another Quicken coming out. This Fred is just getting so many turns. This is still another Quicken. Oh, man. This is so painful for Unhindered. This accuracy is just a problem, unfortunately. She's just going to back up and heal herself. But the healing power down from the Drain Flurry completely mitigates that heal. Razor's Edge comes out. And she is one hit away from this game being served tacos. Oh, no. It's a Guard Haste, not a Quicken. And that is a holy prayer, healing to full. So if you thought this fight wasn't over, it is definitely over now. I imagine this is finally another quicken, though. And she's taking her sweet time. Okay, as a notification comes in from the player's phone, Eltra finally... Does whatever the heck she was doing. She didn't even really do anything. Halloween Fred is just going to step up and take out Halloween Little Leela. And that is a two-game series victory for Surf Taco. So Surf Taco tied with me in the standings currently with 11 points. Brings himself up to 14. So I'm going to have to win my series to try and keep up with him. And honestly, Willie Goats with 13 coming into the week. Sand Rooster with 12. There's a lot of teams that the pressure is now on. Now that Surf Taco won his series. So hats off to him for the series win. Uh, GG's to Unhindered. That first game especially was a very, very close one. It was an entertaining series. But we've got four more for you guys today. And let's go check those out. All right, guys, second series of today. We've got Sand Rooster of the Guild, Get Schwifty, Coach of the Bohemian Rhapsody. Versus Mr. Aloha, Coach of the Dead Society, or excuse me, Guild Dead Society, Coach of Pineapple Pizza. And for Sand Rooster's side, he's got Jaden, he's got Summer Jaden, Summer Helena, Queen of Horn, Mashri, Queen, Engelbert, Winter Rabbi, Cyrell, Murmur, Zazan, and Joom. And Mr. Aloha's side, Vela, Selvas, Eliza, Glacella, Moore, Barrett, Kilfay, Grace, Valade, Liarte, and Oron. And uh, the biggest thing I will shout out here, obviously Sand Rooster on a four-week win streak. Um, he lost 0-2 in his first two weeks, and he hasn't lost since. 
Uh, he's been doing very, very well for himself. The biggest reason for that is that double Jaden comp has been extremely effective for him. Will he continue to do that? Because a couple of red flags here for that team going into uh, Pineapple Pizza's team that I will shout out. Celis can potentially absorb quite a bit of the things that Summer Jaden and Jaden can do. Um, not every single skill that Summer Jaden has is reflectable, but a lot of them are, and Celis can soak up a lot of that stuff. On another point is that the wind that Barium and Rhapsody has on their side, um, Mr. Aloha's got a lot of ice. He's got Eliza, he's got Velus, he's got Oron, he's got Barret, even Valade kind of to a lesser extent. Uh, but he's got a lot of those units that can kind of counter that element. So do we finally see Sand Rooster shift back to one of his other teams? That would be what I would be curious to see here. On Pineapple Pizza's side, he's also got water. So does Sand Rooster feel more safe running something like a lightning you know type of team or maybe he even does go double you like double 100 cost maybe he does do like Jaden summer helena or summer Jaden summer helena so he's at least mitigating you know some of that stuff elementally from mr aloha's side though i'm curious to see what he brings i know he was very very excited to bring out Oren last week will he do that again against his team i'm not sure if that would be the best move personally i would like to see something Either Celis or Barrett, I would like to see somebody trying to tank up some of those hits. I think Barrett could actually do a decent amount of damage into those gunners if they do come. I think Celis could soak some of those hits pretty well. Wouldn't mind seeing Eliza either, uh, but I'd be very curious to see what he brings. So let's go ahead and just jump into the series and see what these guys brought. All right, guys, game number one of Sand Rooster versus Mr. Aloha. He's still rocking that dead account username here. But we've got Oron from the right side. So Mr. Aloha is sticking to, I think, what is probably his favorite character. I know he really, really wanted him on the team. He's bringing out the 140 Barrett, though, with the new uh, dream enhancement. Sand Rooster is not doing the Jaden comp. He is switching it back. Enchanting Skies coming up from Summer Helena, getting that damage up based on basically using her own TP to try and make additional modifier for her skills. Pugilistic Mastery comes out for Queen, so a double Lightning Comp. No water coming out from Mr. Aloha, though. He does not fall for that trap, and he goes for some ice on his side. Bells come out from uh, Oron. He's going to have plenty of AP here. And what is Grace going to do? Mind Enhancer, Spirit Up, and Spirit Debuff Resistance Up. Okay. Steel skin plus going to pop courage or courage online for bear area attack resist up. I believe this is the skill that got the uh, upgrade from his dream upgrade, or it was his mastery too. But either way, that skill basically got better. Immortal spirit comes out from Summer Helena, so she's also going to have courage. I'm not sure why sometimes I call her Summer Helena. I've always said Helena. I don't know why I'm doing that today, but who knows? Padfoot comes out from the Queen. That Pissarro TMR is very, very effective. And Sand Rooster's team is getting very far forward here. They might fall for an AoE here. Oron, what can he do here? Tornado's going to come out. I imagine this probably kills Zaza. Oron can do a decent amount of damage. 9267 on the Zaza. Does about half of Queen's health as well. And Summer Helena going to go for her limit break. Does this one-shot the Oron? Mermaid Dance. Very cool animation. 6217 drops the area attack resist. Does not kill him in one hit, though. Can Barrett somehow get rid of Queen? He's going to pop the limit break. Go Catastrophe. If this kills Queen, this could be very interesting. Mr. Aloha could potentially take this. No, this is actually going under the Summer Helena. I am shot. Oh, with the hate down on Queen. I just realized that. That might have just saved her life and Sand Rooster's chances at winning this. Grace, what does she have? She's going to go for a heal. Healing power was down on the Barret. Doesn't look like it made a huge deal, though. An area attack resist up. I did not realize that Grace's heal did that. That's actually very cool. Another healing power down coming out from that charge, Johanna. Midsummer magic. Oh, my goodness. Kills the Barret. It, that skill removes courage, and it has a chance to stop, and it lands the stop on Oron. That is absolutely brutal for Mr. Aloha as he missed his turn and likely could have taken out one of these units. Probably would have popped the re-raise on Summer Helena, but he's down now. I don't know how Grace is possibly going to pull this off here. She would have to go for a full life. I guess she does have, like, she has good resistances. She is part of that as Summer Helena actually goes for a heal. She cannot reach for damage. I'm kind of surprised. This is probably going to be a full life. I, I don't know if Queen can one-shot her. Flashbound's going to go off, has a chance to stun. The stun does not land. 
Does 39.43 damage? Grace is going to go for a full life. Does this land? Oron typically does not have 97 faith, but he comes back from the dead. I think Summer Helen is going to go for Grace. Can Oron pull a big AoE here? I That would be a major uphill climb. I don't know how he would do that. Does he have a big AoE in his kit? He just goes for Banishing Blade. Goes for the Queen. Very cool animation, though. I haven't seen Oron in a long time. Takes out the Queen. This is actually now down to a 1v1. This looked like it was completely over in Sandrooster's favor. Solarization is 7,000 damage. Does not kill Oron. But I think Summer Helena still has... Does she have re-raise or just have Courage? I think she just has Courage online. That is a lot of damage. But I don't think Oron has Courage removal, and it's not going to matter. Summer Helen is going to go first here. She's just going to do a standard attack, but honestly, that fight ended up being very, very close. I do wonder, um, that stop that landed on Oron, he missed a turn. I kind of wonder if that would have mattered. If that stop didn't land, I mean, given how close this fight ended up being, I think Summer Helena still had Courage online, so technically you'd have to hit her twice. Uh, but if he was able to proc that earlier, I don't know. It's, it's tough to say. I think he, I think Sandrooster probably still wins. He probably wins with, like, one health left or, you know, one hit left on Summer Helena. But either way, that was a heck of a game one. A uh, very valiant effort coming out from Mr. Aloha. Obviously, he is out of the playoffs right now, but he is trying to play spoiler as best he can. So let's jump into game two and see if he can make some sort of adjustment to try and take this win. Game number two, you guys, we've got Sandrooster's Engelbert. And uh, I think another name change coming out from Mr. Aloha. I believe that said Aerith dead. Um, spoiler alert. Some people haven't played Final Fantasy VII from whatever, two decades ago or whatever the heck it is. From Sandrooster's side, we've got Jaden, Engelbert, and Murmur. And it looks like the same squad coming out from Mr. Aloha. Um, normally, I would say I don't like running the same team after you lose, but that fight was actually insanely close. And he might have felt like the stop was the difference. That being said... Sandrooster might think the same thing, because he actually changed up his team as well. Jaden could be very scary on this map. How well can Barrett tank up that damage is my question. He goes Steel Skin again, same buff as last time. But the big thing, though, I think the big difference here that might really benefit Sandrooster is Engelbert is a very good physical tank. And on Mr. Aloha's side, he just doesn't have any magic damage. So double haste coming out from Sandrooster's side. Between the Pizarro TMR and the fast cast ability, and trust the future comes out from Oron. Defense piercing rate up, so he will at least be able to chew through Engelbert's defense pretty well. What do we got here? I can't imagine Barrett can. No, he can reach. He goes for arm shot. No disable. 1292 damage. Not a lot. And fleet of foot. I kind of like this. Gets the hate down on your support, so your support does not get targeted in the back line. Also, the movement up, but that was a shitload of damage coming out from Golden Magishot. 7k. And now the entire team from Sandrister's side is hasted up. Retribution Drain comes out from Engelbert. Cannot kill the Barret. And how much hate does Engelbert have right now? I think he probably has 12. I think his original buff gives him 12, I think. Tornado comes out. 3207. Just not enough. Physical magic shield is nice to make him a little bulkier. Magic blast won't do a ton here because of that. 3k. But procs the courage on Barret. Grace is going to have to hit a very, a very big heal. Excuse me here. Does she get it off in time? Barret's going to go point blank. Removes the courage. That is kind of nice. But I just don't know how you're going to chew through him fast enough to get to this Jaden in the back. The Kuriga kind of pops though. That's a, a lot of health. And Murmur just refreshing that haste. Magic Blast Plus comes out. Does not kill Barret, but I think Engelbert's going to remove him from the fight right here. Can Mr. Aloha slowly whittle through Engelbert? Because Grace should be able to get a full life. But my question is, does she get that off in time before Jaden hits Oron? I just don't see that happening. Her cast time would have to be insanely fast here. She's going to go for it, but this is a limit break coming out from Jaden, trying to break that barrier that Orin has on himself. Good chunk of damage. He does not die. Can Murmur reach a jamming thrust? She cannot. I shall back you. And now, I'm sorry, it was not a full life. It was actually just a Kuriga. I think that's pretty much going to seal it. I think you have to get the, the tank back online, because Orin's going to die from another hit from Jaden here. Engelberg going to go from back. Retribution Drain. And that's sustain, just healing himself up. Just such of an effective tank. 
Oron's trying to hang out as hang on as long as he can, but yeah, Murmur's gonna walk up. Jamming Thrust is going to take him out. And you have to think this fight is certainly over now. Sanders are coming into the week with 12 points. Full life though? Full life whips. Yeah, that's rough. I think Oron's probably running 50 faith. Um, I don't blame him. I would typically probably run 50 faith on Oron too. Not a huge reason to run higher faith. But that does mean that it's not a like basically 100% chance for full life to go off. But GG's, man, that was a great series. Um, game one especially was extremely close. I think Mr. Aloha gave him a, a run for his money in that first game. I think a great adjustment from Sanders to a game two, bringing out that physical tank, realizing that Mr. Aloha was probably going to bring the same team and bring just physical damage. I mean, Engelbert just absolutely hard carried that. He was just soaking up everything so incredibly well. But Sanders, like I said before, coming into the week with 12 points, gets another three on the board. So he's going to remain uh, in that third place spot at the end of the week. Uh, he can't pass HNX because he was 16 coming into the week, uh, but he can't be passed up either because he achieved three. So he's going to be safe in that third place spot, regardless of what happens with any of the other matches. So GG's to him. Um, you know, good game to Mr. Aloha. I play him next week and uh, hope that we have a good game as well next week. But we got three more series coming up for you guys, and let's go jump into them. All right, guys, matchup number three of this week. We've got Willie Goats of the Guild Solaris, coach of the Corpse Brigade versus Coppola of the Guild Galleon and the Gnostics. Currently his undefeated uh, streak on the line, 6-0, and oh, trying to see if he can bring it to 7-0 and oh against Willie Goats and the Corpse Brigade. On Willie Goats' side, he's got Knight of Ruin Stern, Dark Fina, Joker, Orlando Ramza, Ketone, Delita, Gafgirian, Mastadio, Balo, and his newly acquired Warrior of Light. On Coppola's side, he's got Starlight, Elena, Skahal, Cloud, Lucio, Raldor, Ildira, Victoria, McLeod, Lilith, Nyla, Naya, and Howlet. What I expect to see this week, honestly, um, I think it's easier to basically break down Coppola's side first. He's only brought two different team comps this season, and honestly, I don't think he has a reason to to defer from that. He's just had so much success from those two team comps. So my, the question, right, is basically, do you bring your lightning comp or do you bring your light comp? Personally, just because there is that ketone on Willie Goats' side, I know he hasn't brought her out yet. Um, but I think it's probably safer for him to go with the light side of things. Lucio is very good against dark units, and Willie Goats has a lot of dark units on his side. Lucio can build incredible dark resistance. He has a light resistance break on his limit break, allowing Starlight Elena to do a lot more damage than she normally would in that matchup if you were building light resistance. So I think that's probably the safest route for him to go. I expect the Starlight Elena Lucio Naya personally, if I had to guess. Guess. From Willie Goat's side, if I were him, I would think about running something like Dark Fina and just making sure that she's very, very accurate. Um, I think the thing is, like, having good AoE resist at a high health, having re-raise, Starlight Elena and Lucio don't have any sort of re-raise removal, and she does have access to non-elemental damage with her Comet ability, so even if Lucio builds up Dark Res, I think she could be pretty effective there. Would not be surprised for Willie Goat to go a different route, though. We've seen on many, many occasions him bring out that evasion side of things, Knight of Rune Stern, Delita, and Mistadio. So does he try and go blow for blow and say, hey, you know, my evasion versus your like partial evasion? You know, Lucio isn't necessarily an evade unit. You can stack it up as much as you can, but he's not an evade unit. But maybe he goes that route. I'm not entirely sure. But again, I would not be surprised to see him break out Ketone in some fashion, just because of the lightning threat on Coppola's side. But I think if he brings Ketone into light, I think it's probably going to be pretty tough for him. It'll be interesting. The one thing about bringing Dark Fina that is scary into Coppola and the Gnostics is he does have that Naya in the back line that does have Reflect, so you could potentially reflect one of your own abilities on your own head. That can be incredibly painful, so I can understand Willie Goats if he doesn't want to bring that. Honestly, I think it's a pretty tough matchup for him, but he's been doing pretty well this season. He's sitting there with 13 points, and I think he, at bare minimum, wants to try and win a game this week just to maintain that 14 points and be tied uh, with Surf Taco, who is now at 14 after his series win. If he can win and upset Coppola, I think his playoff chances go through the roof. But I think it'll be really, really interesting. Let's check out this series and see who won. All right, guys, game number one here. We've got Coppola on the left side with the Lucio hover and the Warrior of Light hover from Willy Goat. So I don't know if this was necessarily something I expected, but this could actually be pretty effective. Warrior of Light, is he going to be level 140 is my question. He is. This is the 140 Warrior of Light. 
he can be a pretty big pain to take down. So will it be enough to try and take down Coppola here? He's going to go out tempered my resolve. Just a pretty standard um, start from from Coppola. He normally goes with the Courage and re-raise on Elena. And then Keenblade, Lucio, and Naya will typically do either regen or reflect. I don't imagine any reflect coming out here with no magic staff from Willy Goats. But Mustadio and Ketone are going to get themselves all set up. So this is interesting. A team that we have definitely never seen from Willy Goats up to this point. Very curious to see how this pans out for him. So sweet support coming up from Naya. So getting that agility up on the team. This team is incredibly fast on Coppola's side. Zombie transformation coming out. Warrior Light. We saw this from him last week. And 14,000 health is a lot of health for Warrior of Light. What can Keytone do? So she's going to go Utsu Semi Shadow. Missile and Magic Attack Resist up. Honestly, the Magic Attack Resist might help a little if Elena goes Unavailable Pain. Otherwise, won't be a ton of issue. Quick Shot comes out. Honestly, not bad damage. The Chain won't really matter. Um, I don't think because they're not really going to chain that type of damage. But a little bit onto Elena. What's going to happen here? Naya's going to channel a Reflect? No, a Protect. Okay, yeah, that makes a lot more sense going into the physical damage. Warrior of Light, what does he have? He's going to go for the Limit Break. Crystal Braver, this will not chain with Mustadio's damage, unfortunately, but a very cool animation, especially with this high resolution that Coppola always brings us. That did basically nothing to Lucio. My god, how is he that tanky? And Elena dodged all of it. Banishka Saber does not do a ton to Warrior of Light, though, so he's still tanking pretty well. Ketone cannot reach. I think Willy probably really wanted a Drain Force there. Power shot piercing. Honestly, Mustadio doing doing some work here. And I say this every time, but Coppola's Lucio is just built different. I don't know what's in the water over there, but it is kind of disgusting. Luminous Grace going to come out. This should break the light resistance on Warrior of Light. Not sure if Willy is stacking that on him or not. But 50 to 30. That is some good damage. The self heal going to bring him up almost to full. So they're still going to have to chew through another 14k health, but... Naya's here in the back on a pop a Kiraga. Can you at least proc the Courage before this heal goes off? Rainforce, that will hit. So it's going to proc Elena's Courage. The, the heal's going to go off, but at least there's that going for Willy. But Naya's such a good healer, and getting CT up is always really good, too. Banish Saber now does 9,000. Thanks to the chain from Lucio and the Light Resistance down. And Mistadio is basically out of AP, can only do a standard attack. I just don't know how Willy is going to chew through this. I don't think he has the damage because Naya is in the backline sustaining. Radiant Nova comes down. That's going to delete Mistadio. This is looking uh, a very grim in game one for Willy as the miss comes out from Warrior of Light. I imagine this is probably a limit break for Elena. They're stacked up really nicely right now. It is. She's going to turn. She's going to go Prismatic Punishment. How much damage is this going to do? I imagine this is going to take out... Not both of them. It's going to take out Ketone. Does not kill Warrior of Light, but... There's just no way. He's never going to have enough damage for this. What are you doing, Naya? She's turning around. She goes for sweet support. Agility up on the team. I don't think that's necessary. I think he probably could have just passed her turn, Naya, but that's okay. I think uh, Lucio's going to walk up and get this kill. There is re-raise, though, I think, still. Yeah, re-raise still online, so it looks like Elena will probably claim this. Vanish Blade comes out, 53-50, and a four flash chain is just too much um, from Coppola's side here. Game one, honestly, was not very close. I think that's really tough for Willy Goats. Like I said, he's got a really tough matchup. I mean, to be fair, Coppola's team is just disgusting. It's really, really strong. Um, I think Willy needs to bring more damage, though. I don't think he can afford to bring, like, Warrior of Light, even though he's a really good tank and can soak up some of that damage. Naya has so much sustain, you basically need to kill her with an AoE, or you just have to have so much damage to basically get through all the healing and not have to worry about it. It's... It's much easier said than done. Don't hear me, don't hear what I'm not saying. It's it's very, very hard to get it done, but I think you'd have to get rid of the Warrior of Light and go heavier damage. I would not be surprised to see something like Dark Fina come out in game two or that evasion comp that he normally brings. But let's go ahead and jump into it and see what he decided on. 
All right, guys, game number two here, and it looks like a switch up from Willy. Uh, he's going with the Knight of Rune Stern. It looks like probably the same team for Coppola here with the Lucio showing. Is this an evasion team, though, or is this like Knight of Rune Stern Joker? I mean, Stern can bring the damage if he can get the damage off. And he also has a big AoE, so maybe this is the play. Maybe like a hazard render taking out Naya in the back line. Maybe that is the move. We're going to have to find out, though. Lucio going to go Greater Domain of Light. Even more Dark Resist up on the party. Yeah, I would not be surprised to see um, Coppola's team just having insane Dark Resist on his side. It's going to go the Lock TMR on Delita. Illusion buff for Knight of Rune Stern. They're going to try and be as dodgy as possible. And the sweet support buff. This is an interesting switch up. I think Willy Goats normally goes with just the standard accuracy buff on Mastadio, I think. But he actually goes with the uh, Little Lilo the Bold team arm. I kind of like this change, to be honest. And Starlight Elena now has her three lives online. So good luck, Willy Goats, trying to get through that. And Treasure Hunter's Fortune just going to refresh here. So Delita not going to do another buff just because he had to catch everybody. Hazard Render, that is a lot of damage. Does drop the healing power too. Will that matter for Naya's heals is my question. Rocking the Courage on the very first hit is pretty massive though, I think. Light Shot going to take her out. That Reray is going to come up. This is a much, much better start from Willy Goats, I will say. The only thing is, my question is, does Knight of Rune Stern have enough AP for another Hazard Render? Because that's pretty big if he doesn't. And the timing here. Yeah, Naya's cast time is pretty quick. Kiriga Benevolent going to go up. That heal reduction really didn't matter. Probably because she had healing power up from her own regen ability. Wait a minute. Can Elena not hit her? Hit him? Or does she not have uh, that height range? Does she does she not have any height range two abilities? Interesting. Mighty Break comes out, but it's not enough to kill her. Oh man, Mastadio has to take her out here, or else this is going to be really tough for Willy. Radiant Nova's going to come out. Lucio's going to get rid of him. Oh man, this was this was looking so good for Willy, but I think Naya can reach this Kiriga, and this probably goes off before Delita moves. It's, it's going to. That is so massive. They needed to take out that Elena there. Ear, Ear doesn't blade. Very dodgy Rune Stern, so that's looking good for Willy, but Knight of Rune Stern is basically out of that out of AP, and that Kuriga is massive. Delita would have to one shot, and he can't even reach. Knight of Rune Stern just going to walk up and do the standard attack. Honestly, if Lucio didn't kill Mustadio there, I think this fight could have been very, very different, but this looks very one sided for Coppola personally. Yeah, especially if Lucio can hit. Looks like he's building a lot of accuracy. Crescentic break or crescentic break, whatever you want to call it, takes out the Knight of Rune Stern. Delita does turn towards Elena, so he's dodging at least one of these hits. But how many does he dodge? It looks like he only dodged one out of the three, and it's going to drop his agility, making him less evasive. Pressure Accessory Plus, but yeah, only 33.96 to that Lucio. Lucio's just so tanky. This Coppola team proving to be so damn hard to beat every single week. I imagine Lucio's going to just take out this Delita here. He's got 26 AP. He's going to go for Scintillating Eclipse. And uh, that is going to be a win for Coppola. Um, honestly, ended up looking pretty one-sided at the end. I will say, I'm not saying Willy Goats would have won, uh, but it would have been a very interesting match if Mastadio was able to go a little sooner and take out that Elena because the Courage and Re-Rays were already gone. Naya would have missed her Kuriga um, and then like would have had to go for a full life or something like that instead. So it would have been really, really interesting. But hey, you know, no hard feelings. Uh, Willy Goats, Coppola is a really, really tough team to beat in our league. Um, he's just got some really, really good teams and he's an amazing player. That being said, Willy Goats has still got a chance for playoffs. He's got a couple of tough weeks remaining uh, in the schedule here, but he's still at 13 points. He's only one point behind Surf Taco. Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see how this goes. I think it's going to be a really tight race to see who makes the playoffs by the end of this, you guys. And it, there's two more series left. Let's go ahead and check those out. All right, everybody. This is series number four of week seven. <clears throat> Machen X of the Guild Lucis, coach of the Shoe Puff Sweetheart, versus All Smoked Up of the Guild Star Nice, coach of the Gumi Gods. And this is a banger because Machen X, if he wins... 
He doesn't technically secure playoffs, but he is like one point or maybe two points away from guaranteeing a playoff spot. And for All Smoked Up on the right side here, he's sitting at 10 points. And now with Willie Goats losing this week, currently sitting at 13, if he were to pick up a series win, he would be tied with him and only one point down from Surf Taco and the Superines of being right around that top four spot. So this is a very big series for both of these teams. And let's take a look at them. So Machen X, we've got Elia, we've got Obron, Snow, Zoma, Sweetheart, Oldira, Lowell, Miranda, Curry, Ravis, Uni, and Mia. On the Gumi God side, we've got Astrius, Sylvie, Locke, Chunak, Sakura, Rachez, Camilo, Mont, Slime, Surges, and Hope. We did see that Hope come out last week versus Coppola and the Gnostics. Honestly, I thought he performed pretty well. Uh, some of those uh, Imperil Guns dropping the area we resist and putting out some decent damage. Unfortunately, lost that game one versus Coppola, I think because he was paralyzed three times in a row and then Cloud got a reflex. A little bit unlucky on his side, but honestly, I thought he performed pretty well considering that I think a lot of teams thought Hope wasn't worth that 90 cost. Um, teams that I expect to see from this matchup, Honestly, your guess is as good as mine. Uh, from All Smoked Up in the Gumi God side, there's really no elemental reason you can't run water. Obviously, Ravis is a lightning unit, so that can be a little bit scary, but like Ravis isn't really a damage dealer. She's a tank, so you could run something like Astrius Rechez Slime that he's ran before. You could run Astrius Chunak Surges. You could run the Chunak Rechez. Mont. You know, he's got three different water teams that he can run. He could also do any of the light teams. Honestly, I'd... I'm not entirely sure what to expect from on the left side on Machen. He does have Zoma, which can kind of scare you off some of that physical damage dealers because of the bravery down. So if Gumi Gods goes for something like Sakura, Sylvie, Slime, I wouldn't be shocked about that either. Just trying to bring that magic damage and not being able to be mitigated by the bravery down. Shoepuff Sweetheart. Again, it, it's so tough to call. You know, he's run a lot of different types of stuff. He's had success with Miranda. He's had success with Elias. He's had success with Zoma. He did just draft Mia in the supplemental draft. And I think the only reason you would ever do that is to run your two 100 costs together. So will we see something like Elias over on Mia? That would be fun to see as well. Honestly, I'm not really sure. I think the only thing I don't expect to see is the Sweetheart Odira. But anything else I think is pretty much fair play. But let's go ahead and jump into this series check it out all right guys game number one here between machin x and all smoked up we've got alaya showing and we've got astri showing so it looks like a water team coming out from the Gumi gods now with machin x is it the alaya obron or is it the ice team it is the alaya obron mia comp so he's bringing it out he took mia Fine. in the supplemental and this is why right, right here we'll have to see how this team works out so there's no like elemental um synergy here other than Ready, you know countering you the the counter down. But that's not really relevant in this matchup. Rach has Astria's slime. Stand strong. So what we got? Deep fortification, slash attack resistance up, max HP up. Honestly, the slash attack resist is probably not going to matter, but it's still a good buff overall. You better thank me. Interesting. So the Alaya TMR, I suppose just to boost up Alaya's damage, you. and maybe he's worried about some sort of status effects on the other side. I'm not so sure about that. I think that's just to boost Elias damage. Blessing from afar, AP cost rate down, magic shield. Very nice tech. I'm coming. And missile attack resist piercing rate up. I'm not entirely sure like how much she'll even need it, but obviously this is one of her main buffs that she tries to get off every single fight. Here you go. And the dragon's bloodline refresh. So just attack up on the party. I think it's probably just like a generic attack buff uh, for the team that works for both elements, so I suppose it makes sense. This should be Oberon's barrier. It is, so he gets that online. Normally, that is pretty important here. I got you covered. <laughs> As we get the sword song formation, just a lot of buffs uh, going over and over again. Not many people walking forward on all smoked up side here. And Slime is actually kind of out in front. This should be I interesting. Sharp 2 comes out, does not kill the Slime, crucially. I know his resistances are very poor other than Slash Resist. He will probably go for a Hustle Dance plus one, I imagine, on himself. Yep, so he's going to do that. Heal himself up to full. No big deal. But can Oberon take him out in one hit? That's my question. There's an elemental disadvantage, and Oberon is a strong fella. Halting Spear plus damage caps and stops. Stop and Courage. I wonder how much that stop is going to matter... I think he would probably drop to the I'll next hit anyway, down. but cross destruction. 
Wow, Alaya is barely alive. She lives with 129 health. That is actually massive, because she gets to go now. How much damage can she get off here? She goes you. armor bore. She can hit Rachez back there. That is absolutely disgusting. And is that little sliver of health that she lives with the difference? That's what we're going to have to find out. Steelheart comes out. The charm lands on Astrius. Oh, no. This looked up. This looked good for a little bit for all smoked up with all the damage he did. But now, will Oberon break the charm? Nope. He's going back on. He's going for Rachez. He's going to take her out. And this is so big here because Asteris is charmed. Rachis is going to drop, and now Asteris is not going to hurt them. I mean, he would have easily taken out Elia here, and now he's just going to buff them instead. <laughs> oh, God. And now Elia gets another hit here. Hail the bullet, 65-93, and lands the Frostbite. And this is going to end up looking very one-sided here for Mage and X. I will say this fight could have went either way. I, I can't imagine there's any world where Asterius turns this around, but this could have been very, very close. He does have pressing advantage. All, yeah, the whole thing. Yeah, no way. Courage is up. One more hit. We'll do it. I never miss. Yeah, that's going to do it. Game one is now over. Machin X wins it. I will say that ended up in a 3-0, but I think that could have gone way, way differently. If the charm doesn't land on Asterius and the stop doesn't land on Slime... If Astrius does 130 more damage to, to Aliyah, like if any one of those things happens differently, I'm very curious to see if they would have won this. If I'm all smoked up, I probably bring the exact same team, but I try to um, change it up a little bit in the sense where like giving some Astrius uh, charm resist, like giving Astrius some charm resist so I know that that doesn't happen. And... I think I take my chances on the stop for slime because honestly, I don't know how much that mattered. Like he was proc to courage anyway. I would probably just try and change his positioning so he doesn't get screwed right in the in the front. Like he doesn't walk forward first. But this will be interesting to see. Do the same teams come out? Because sometimes when teams win like this with like Mage and X did and knows that a little bit of RNG helped them out, sometimes they'll just change their comps right away. Will he do that or will he stick to his guns? Let's jump into game two and find out. All right, guys, game number two. We've got Olaya and Astria showing again, so I do think these might be the exact same two teams. That attack and magic stat looks pretty familiar from all smoked up side. It looks, it, at least it looks close to what it was last time. And yeah, it's the exact same two teams. I actually do kind of like this from all smoked up side. Normally, I do not like this after Fine. you lose. I'll give you the fight you want. But if I'm him, I'm, I'm adding some charm resist, and I'm taking my chances with this squad. You are destined to fail. Stand strong. Deep fortification on Astrius. I would almost even think about maybe Dragon running a little hate on Astrius, or maybe like hate yes. down on Rachez, because Rachez is a lot more susceptible. That magic shield I'm that she gets like does absolutely nothing yes. in this matchup. Sweet support coming out, so literally the bold team are just Ready making that team speedy. She goes Banishing Barrier. This is kind of what I'm talking about. So she gets Slash Tech versus Piercing right up. That part is very nice, but the Magic Shield is going to do absolutely nothing. Accelerate Agility up. So this is a different buff coming out from Slime also. I am pretty sure he uh, he did a different one last time. My power grows. Courage for Astrius. So a slightly different setup from All Smoked Upside. And this positioning is a little different from Ancient X as well, actually. Oberon is not as far forward as he was last time when he casted this barrier. I don't think. Drain Evocation? Did that one shot? Yes, it did. Uh, Mia is gone. And that might not seem like a big deal, but Mia's charm was absolutely massive last time. This could be the, the difference from all smoked up here. 5,200 damage from Sharpshoot is very good, though. And can Asterius actually reach the Alaya? But Slime, safely in the back. Very, very effective healer. Cross Destruction, only 2750. Oberon tanking that very nicely because of his barrier. And how much does this do? I got you covered. And because of the jump up in the air, Rachez actually cannot hit Oberon. She would have been in range, but now she's not. That is a lot of damage onto the Astrius. Can Elia chain up with this with a big AoE? She's probably only got two movement. She might have to just do a standard barrage. No, she can do hail of bullets. That is a lot of damage. No um, frostbite. I don't remember if that's the move that does frostbite. I think it is. Procs the Courage on Asterisk. Hustle Dance plus one will be nice, though. 
What can Asteris do for an AoE? Can he take out Aliyah in the back line? Last time he could not one-shot, but he actually goes to Limit Break. This is going to drop her in one hit, I guarantee it. Yeah, 7509 and the follow-up attack. Good night, Aliyah. And now it is Oberon in a 1v3. My, how the tables have turned. Armor Piercer, though, drops the Rage as... This is not over. Astrius, I don't think he can kill. He's only got 19 AP. Lupine Rend, yeah, no way. Even with the Crystal Trace. Oh my god, 3,700 damage from the follow-up. He lives with 79 health. Does he have an AoE to hit both? No, he has the Limit Break for the Slime. Oh my god, if he was able to AoE both, that might have actually just ended. Because the Courage has already been procced on Astrius, but he's going to get rid of the Slime. Actually, he has Courage as well. I imagine Slime will just walk up to an AoE heal. Yeah, Hustle Dance plus one. Astrius should be able to take this fight here, even without AP. And uh, All Smoked Up going to take the game to victory here over Mage and X. So we've got a three-game series on our hands. The first one of today. So this is awesome. Like I said, uh, All Smoked Up and the Gumi Gods really trying to make it back into that top four. They started off the season really strong with three straight wins. Has had a bit of a rough patch recently, but now trying to take an upset over Machin X would be major for him. Machin X trying to guarantee that he is in the playoffs. If he gets a series win, he is just... He's basically got like a 99% chance of winning, making playoffs if he wins this here. So this game three is massive. Let's go ahead and jump in and watch it. Game number three, you guys. Machin X still running that, I think, exact same team. I'm actually kind of surprised after he just lost game two to that same squad. Did he outthink All Smoked Up here? Did he just like call his bluff on All Smoked Up switching? Because this is a Chunak here. Asterius is now gone. And I will say Asterius put in a ton of work last time. Fine. I'll give you the fight you and want. Slime was pretty good too. Mott here instead. I think All Smoked Up predicted a switch from Agent X and he just didn't. He just I'll stuck with the same down. squad. Let's go. Will this be good or not? Chunak can be very dodgy, but there are guaranteed hits in both Oberon and Elias' kits. Sweet Sport coming out. Pretty similar buff rotation from last time. The dragon spear pierces in fact, the I think it's the exact same. That crit evasion and AoE resist is always a super good buff. Banishing Barrier coming on just like last time, and Mont is the tank. He is very off to the side. I like running my tank off to the side, but I will say he is the slowest member of this team right now. He acted last. If these units can reach the back line without hitting Mont, this is going to be a very one-sided affair. Mont needs to get out front, and they need to be able to reach. Alaya can probably reach because she has, like, insane range. But I'm looking at the turn order here, and Mont does not act for a while. This could be a big problem for all smoked up here. Preservative footwork, evasion up. Because I think the big thing is, too, you want the other units, especially with an Evasion Chunak, doing AoE abilities. Because AoE abilities are not as likely to hit him. Their guaranteed hits are Sharpshoot and Thundersmite, both single target attacks. You better thank you. So if they have to hit the tank and do AoE damage on the backline, they might just straight up miss him. What's going on? Okay, so Mia's taking her sweet time just straight thinking. Oh Purple God. Dragon's Aegis comes on. He's got his barrier. This might actually be really good for All Smoked Up. Holy cow, the Keen Blade does not go next. Yes, he does. He might actually be able to get in range to soak this damage. That Keen Blade might have been massive. Oh my god, she actually couldn't reach Mont. She still just sharpshoots the Chunak. Can Oberon reach the Mont? If he can't, this is... He can't. This is a huge problem. Thundersmite takes out Chunak. That is major. I'm actually kind of surprised that Aliyah couldn't reach. She has so much range on her abilities. I wonder if she has, like, Barrage turned off. Here you go. Sweet support online nice. for Mia. I think she might have Barrage turned off. I bet you Barrage probably reaches. Prepare yourself. It's hard to say, because there is a pretty big uh, range. Like, she is pretty far back. She obviously only has two movement. How do you like this one? Never. Tawny Blade comes out, has more hate up, which is great, but... That is some very good damage from Rachez. The problem is she needs to not get caught in an AoE. This is where you go. She gets caught in that one. I don't know, man. Armor Piercer. If she gets hit by one AoE, this is over for All Smoked Up. Mont can tank pretty well, but... Oh my god, she can't reach Mont again, and she just limit breaks. I'm pretty sure this was... Into Rage wasn't it? 
No, it wasn't a mont. Okay, it didn't show it. It was it did not show it. It was like off screen, but it wasn't a mont. Mia actually procs the courage and he is immobilized. I don't think he can do armor. Yes, he can do armor piercer again. He lands it on both. Oberon's gonna land the double kill. That is a game three victory for Machin X. Man, GG's. Um hats off to Machin X. Uh Whatever his you know thought process was of calling a bluff or whatever that is, or if he just felt confident in the team, congrats on the game three win for all smoked up. I mean, honestly, I think that fight would have been so different if Mont could have got out sooner. It's playing a tank is like so tricky on some of these maps because you need him to soak the damage while not having the other units soak those AOEs. And unfortunately, the turn order and the positioning just didn't work out for him. Alaya was able to reach the other units and wasn't able to reach the tank. And if you're not able to reach the tank, then he can't do his job. So it was unfortunate, kind of unlucky for him. All Smoked Up does pick up one point, so he now is sitting with 11. He is not out of the playoffs. If he wins the last two weeks, he still has a chance. Uh, but he needs some other things to go his way here. But GG's, what a great series. We've got one more for you guys today. Let's go jump, jump into it. All right, guys, our final series of the week seven Rundall division is my team. I'm the of the guild Thunder Gods, coach of the Demon Detectives versus King Delita of the guild Hokuten and the Black Sheep Knights. I've got Little Little the Bold, Ibarra, Lightning, Garvel, Yuna, Moraga, Kane, Shadowlinks, Titus, Severo, and Gargus on my squad. And he's got Glacial, a flag bearer, King of Leonis, Mont, Terra, Agrius, Varouche, Mashri, Winter, Fina, Helena, Adelard, Vadim, and Renan. Uh, I saved this matchup for last. Honestly, every single Single week. I don't think I've ever put my team last in any of the weeks so far, and I figured that well, I can finally do this here. This matchup looked interesting to me. Um, King Delita, I will say, he only has five points in the board, so his chances of making playoffs were pretty much non existent at this point. That being said, he's put up a really good fight in some of these series. Um, he took a point versus Coppola, not many teams have done that. He won the series versus Machin X, he's the only team to beat him, so that is very impressive. And I think he took a game off of the Gumi Gods as well, but he's had some really really competitive ones and so I was not excited about this matchup I was pretty nervous going into it I'm nervous for every matchup but I was definitely nervous going into this one so looking at his team flag bearer Glacella instantly jumps off of the screen obviously she is an absolute beast she is one of the best if not the best hundred cost unit in the game king of Leonis Mont also jumps off the screen because he just got his brand new 140 upgrade that gives him a really nice self heal and basically gives him an extra like six or seven K HP if you don't have some sort of heal healing power down um so those were like the big two units that jump off the screen to me immediately as you know potential threats or different things like that so my thought process going into game one was he has glacial flag bear who is very scary he also has mashri winter so he has double pierce damage on his team and i've got my boy titus who is a very very resistant to pierce and missile attack damage tank he's very good against um physical damage in general but pierce resistance especially without really you know investing much of anything at all you can get very very high pierce resistance levels so the first unit that i knew for sure i was going to bring to my game one was titus and i had to decide around that how was i going to form my team here i needed to basically build him up a little bit to mitigate magic damage because i knew there was always a threat of terra varush you know renan something like that coming out but he was going to be piece number one. And after looking at the squad, um, I decided a couple things. One, I thought Gargus could be decent on this map, just getting down some damage from range, uh, you know, dropping AoE resist, because I know Glacial Flagbearer can build up a good amount of AoE resist. I also thought that he would probably be one of the most effective units at dealing with a King Mont if that should come out. Um, I thought he could be, you know, he has flair for like a barrier break if Varouche has his magic damage shield online or anything like that like that and i just think it's 70 cost he just works very well the other unit i thought about i thought about ibarra i thought about lightning um and i thought about little Leo the bold ultimately for game one i decided on little Leo the bold a couple of reasons here obviously there's always um like a weird scenario where like vadim is not the threat that i'm worried about but i thought there was a decent chance that he could come and he can be like somewhat evasive and if i bought brought a team with no like accurate third unit i was worried if i got somehow got into a situation where it was vadim versus one person i couldn't hit him i could potentially somehow lose that i was like well if literally all the bold has accuracy that's great he she also has a healing power down skill which i thought could be very effective against the mont king of leonis so my thought process for game number one was i was going to bring titus gargas literally the bold i was going to build up titus's slash and magic resistance as much as i could because those are basically start negative so basically make them not negative so he's not too 
taking extra damage and allow his other buffs to kind of, you know, put in work for me and uh, mitigate that pierce damage. I decided I'm going to run some initial hate on him with the bow tie. I'm going to run Kane's TMR to try and mitigate his low agility, get his speed up, and then he will have standard movement once in one movement comes up. And I know I've said this before, but his AI is kind of weird in that his hate ability, his shield, is pretty low on his AI priority list. So basically, he's going to do Kane's TMR and then going to do his hate buff. That was my general plan. I said I'm going to try and position it in a way where Titus hopefully uh, can get out front and my other two units won't sa soak AoE damage. And I'm just going to hope for the best because I honestly had no idea what he was going to bring. Um... And that was pretty much it. So that was my thought process for game one, you guys. And let's go ahead and check out and see what happened. All right, guys, game number one between my team and King Delita's team. He's got the King Mon showing with a 3,300 attack stat, which tells me that that Glacella Flag Bearer is probably coming. This is a matchup that I was kind of hoping to see, to be honest, because I brought my Titus. And one thing that you'll note is that I turned Little Lilo the Bold's Courage off and used Re-Raise instead. The reason being is that the basically the forward, ranges no of that. the skills that Glacella has, it's way more likely that she will use her Courage removal than her Re-Raise removal if Titus has hate. So that is why I made this adjustment. You're going to see Glacella doing her standard AoE buff. Little Leo the Bull is going to go the slash tech resist piercing rate and get herself heal online. Garg is going to go Black Rose, Helen and TMR, shield and agility up. And we can see Vadim over on the side with the illusion buff. And I'm looking at his movement. It looks like he moves only two spaces. So I'm thinking he probably has bow tie also. I go with the Dragoon's Pride buff, like I said on Titus. I have Bowtie on him, so this buff gives him standard movement. I don't want him to only have two movement, but I want him quicker. I want him faster. And then the next buff should hopefully his be his hate buff with the shield. Mott going to go with the Mercy's Grace. The zombie re-raise TMR coming off of Glacella, so she's going to be very, very hard to kill. It looks like Gargus is able to get in range, though. I expect this to be a Windlash, and as you can see, this is where that uh, zombie re-raise TMR comes in instead of her Courage. Saintly Fortress coming out on Titus, so hate it up, hate up, pierce attack resistance up, critical evasion, a bunch of nice things. Windlash, hoping for a lot of damage, only does 2k uh, with that barrier on her. It does drop her AoE resist though, which I like because that means literally the bold, if she gets an AoE, should hopefully do more damage. Iron Blow comes out from King Mont. This was something I did not expect, but this actually breaks barriers. So Titus does not have his physical barrier online. And you're going to see Stalling Spear still only does 1929. This is not nearly as resistant as I can build Titus for Pierce Resist, and he's still soaking up that damage. I am happy to see it. Saintly Cross does damage, heals up for about 603. Little Leo the Bold's going to walk up. She's going to go for the Limit Break, a nice little AoE, and I'm hoping to do a ton of damage here. Also hoping for Double Blind, because that drops her Slash Resist if it happens. I don't know if these uh, units are naturally resistant to Blind. I didn't look. But they don't land. Flare comes out from Gargus, though. How much damage does this do? Can it kill? It can't, but it does 7k. He's going to heal it back up with that new 140 ability that he has. And now King Mont's going to go. Can he land an AoE is the question. He can't. He actually goes for Spinning Slash. King Delita told me after the fight he accidentally had Claws of the Young King turned off. So I'm guessing that's why he didn't go for that there. I don't know if he could have landed that or not. Spear of Sending comes out. Again, only 1900 damage coming out. So Titus doing his job incredibly well. He has soaked four hits up to this point, and I'm very proud of my boy Titus. The Reflex coming out from Glacella, though. Reflex is always in play. Saintly Cross, he's going to barely heal anything, but Titus, the absolute OG, walking into the corner to avoid his other teammates. Flare comes out for 10k under the King mod. This Gargus, this new pick I selected, putting an absolute work for me. Pretty Paralyzer is going to take out the Glacella. She does have re-raise, so she'll come back. But Titus has soaked, I believe, five hits to this point, so he still should have, I think, two hate online. Actually, I think he has uh, five hate. He should still have three hate because he had Bowtie and the buff. So he should still be able to soak two more hits due to his hate. Stalling Spear 2891, he is still standing strong. Just doing so well for me. And Gargus is going to go Aroga Disperser. You're going to see Vadim actually dodges it. So this is part of why I said I wanted my third unit to be an accurate unit, like Little Leel the Bold. As Vadim actually picks up the kill for King Delita Squad, the first kill on his side goes to his 30 cost unit. Little Leo the Bull is going to step behind him, go pretty Paralyzer, and take him out for 7,900 damage on a crit. And you're going to see that I pick up the game one win. So this is exciting for me. Obviously, uh, you know, happy to get out to an early lead. 
I'm happy that this team worked out for me. I know King Delita told me after the match that he did not realize how incredibly tanky Titus was versus Pierce Resist. I was kind of hoping that was the case because honestly, I, I don't think this is far-fetched. I think if you were to rank all the tanks in the game for like how good they are versus Glacial Flagbearer, Titus might be the best or like right near the best. Um, he's very, he's a niche because he's not good against certain damage types, but versus Pierce and Mistel, he is incredible. So I was very happy to see him put in a lot of work here. I was happy with this squad. Um, this was a team that I brought out, I think for game two against Unhindered last week, and it worked really well for me again. Now, full disclosure, going into game two, King Delita told me, he said, he was going to bring the spice for game two. He said he was going to bring a spicy team. He put it in Discord. I was like, there's no way he's going to put it in Discord that he's going to bring a spicy team and just not bring a spicy team. So my my head rolled around and said, hey, what do I think he's going to bring in terms of spice? You know, the units that are on his squad. Well, he hasn't brought Helena Leonis. That's a possibility. But my head kept landing on Varush and Renan. And I actually scrimmed a game against thunder mage uh one of our um sub leaders in our guild actually shout out to thunder mage of the guild thunder gods and i actually told him i said hey do you happen to have renan or farouche or whatever and i scrimmed a game against those two for him and the team that i brought in game two actually beat that comp so that's kind of what i was hoping to see and we'll see if that is what happened in game two all right, guys, so this is the game to uh, preview screen for our units, and you can see a very, very large uh, magic stat coming out from King Delita. I actually switched up my team as well, which I will go over as we look at the battle. But as I said, when he said that he was going to bring some spice, I made a random prediction and thought that was going to be Adelard, Renan, and Varouche. And I don't mean to spoil this early for you guys, but that is exactly what he brought. So my thought process was I was going to bring some spice as well. I said, hey, sir, I will match your spice with my own spice as well. I'm bringing out my triple UR squad. I haven't done this yet a single time all season, and I'm hoping it works out for me. So I have Garble, Gargus, and Kane, who I have not used Kane a single time all season. Baruch is going to go with his buff. Slash tech resist piercing rate, I believe it gives. Also gives regen and that magic barrier. And I've got my team spread out. My thought process was here that I basically just didn't want anyone to catch AoEs. I wanted them to only be doing like single target damage. I was going to use Kane to get um, Immortal Spirit and also re-raise on so that he basically has to die three times in order for, him to, for them to kill him. And Gargus is on the side over here getting his barrier online. So a couple of barriers and a Courage. Renan going to do his own shield as well. And Zombie Transformation comes out of Farouche. So the biggest thing that I'm afraid of here is Gargus getting picked off by Varouche. So I want Kane to step up because Varouche has a barrier break skill and I'm pretty sure can one-shot my Gargus if he hits that. So that is what I am trying to avoid. So Gargus going to step over. He's going to go for an attack here, but Varouche has a magic barrier online. I'm hoping Kane can land a big AoE here. And so you're going to see... Aragon Disperser comes out from Gargus, does 3309 to Renan. Not terrible damage, but actually gets healed up by the Vital Spark uh, counter ability. And Fast Cast, go, Fast Cast comes out from Adelar. Dragon Raid does not one-shot the Varouche. I was really hoping that was the case. Bamboo Splitter goes and takes out Gargus, a mechanic I learned this week. Gargus starts to fight with three hate down, but because he hit two units at the same time, his hat hate actually goes to zero, not negative. So Varus just targeted him instead of Kane. This is really bad for me. Zealing Thrust comes out, and this is looking kind of grim for me in game two. Gargus going down that early is really bad, but Spirit Blaster comes out from Garble. He takes out the Adelard, and now we're into a 2v2, and I'm thinking, okay, I might have a shot here. Kane, you need to get a nice AoE. He goes for the Brain Piercer. 3,700 damage onto the Renan, takes out the Varus, but there is the re-raise. And I'm wondering, is this going to be enough? Kane's only got 6 AP. What is Varouche going to do? He's going to go Unavailable Pain. That is enough to proc the Courage. Now, Renan, I'm hoping he goes for Kane here instead of Garvel. That is not what happens. He goes over. He takes out my Garvel. Now Kane is in a 1v2 with only 1 AP. And you're going to see Varouche is too fast. He actually laps the Kane, takes him out. And I end up losing game two uh, against King Delita. Um, I was definitely disappointed, I will say. I was hoping to try and take this in two games. I did not want to go to a game three because that is super nerve wracking. And um, I'm trying to make the playoffs and I'm trying to keep up with all the people, you know, near the top. So I really need to try and get three points on the board this week. 
So normally when I play these series, um, I try to take a day between my games and my matches and stuff like that. Uh, I know King Delita said that he was very busy over the weekend. So after this game two happened, we talked about it and I said, well, you know, do you want to just give me like 20 minutes and we'll each take 20 minutes to try and come up with a comp. And then after 20 minutes, we'll do game three. So kind of spur of the moment, trying to come up with a team comp and team plan for game three. I really thought in my head, I thought he would probably bring the same team because he just won with it. But I didn't think I could risk the fact of him bringing Glacella and me not bringing Titus. I really felt like if I wanted to fight this team specifically, I could have brought basically the same team I just brought and made a couple tweaks and probably won this. Uh, but I wasn't, uh, like I said, I, I wanted to make sure to try and cover for Glacella. So I thought I have to bring Titus, even though he has a lot of magic threats on his team and Titus is not the best magic tank. I really felt like I had to bring him. And then I figured to cover for this team, if he was bringing this, I needed to bring physical damage, not magic damage, because that magic barrier on Varush is really, really major, and bring some units that can't just get one shot by him. So I decided for this final game that I was going to bring Titus, I was going to bring Kane again, who I had not brought yet all season, and I was going to bring Lightning uh, from FF13. A couple of physical damage units who can't get taken out in one hit, and hope to God that I win. I had never tested this comp, so who knows what's going to happen. But that was my thought process for going to game three. I was hoping that he would either bring the same team or pivot to a Glacella. But we're going to find out and see what happens. All right, guys, game number three. And at this point, I am incredibly nervous for this series. I know that my playoff hopes and potential are potentially on the line here. And I see the Adelard in the high magic attack stats. So I'm thinking this is probably the exact same team from game two and we'll see what happens here. Titus is not the best magic tank in the world. I did build some stuff up to try and mitigate that a little bit, but we'll see. And you can see the positioning change from King Delita. He's actually going to the other side to try and remain unpredictable. So Rev Revivifying Barrier comes on. He's got that magic barrier, but again, the magic barrier won't really matter. The other stuff is good for him, but that's about it. Relentless Assault comes out from Lightning. I also wanted to cover just in case there was a little bit of Dodgy Vadim that she would have accuracy. So I have the agility and accuracy buff online. Renan's going to use his shield. And I backed Kane up for this fight comparatively to where he was last time. I really wanted to try and make sure that he got Courage and Re-Raise off this time. And this was the big change that I made for Game 3. Instead of going Dragon's Pride, I actually ran Oberon's TMR. Because I thought there was a good chance that he would try and use the haste from Adelard. I did not want Renan to be hasted up like he was in Game 2. As you're going to see, Zombie Re-Raise coming up from Varus just like last time. Lightning has her Pursuit buff, so she is ready ready to go and now the fight should hopefully kick off very soon here nimble movement going to come up from anon and adelard here should channel a fast cast because fast cast does more than just haste so he's still going to go for it but the haste is not going to work zombie transformation comes out from kane so now he has his three lives and i'm feeling a good chunk better about this situation Farouk should be able to reach titus which he can bamboo splitter to 6600 damage that is a lot and i will note Saintly Cross, 1972, heals up just a little bit. Life Siphon 2 does a shitload of damage to Varouche. One shots him, but he does have the re-raise online. So now I'm praying, can Pursuit finish him here? And it can. A 3200 crit from Lightning takes out the Varouche on that follow-up attack. And now it is in a 3v2. I'm feeling pretty good. Titus does have a little bit of hate, but he finds a magic, or a magic, massive magic AoE. Fulgurus Thunderblast coming out from the Renan. I'm hoping this doesn't paralyze because I'm pretty sure that's what it does. It does not land on anyone. A good chunk of damage onto the Kane, but Lightning honestly soaks it pretty well. But Sealing Thrust is going to proc the Courage from Kane here. And I'm hoping my boy can do a lot of damage. I know King Delita's units are pretty weak to pierce damage. He takes out the Renan, does a good chunk to Adelard. And now I'm hoping that Lightning can walk up and clean up the kill. She goes for Spatial Shot. She gets the kill. And I end up winning the game three in a very close series with King Delita. So a couple of things to note here in this game three that I didn't talk about before the match. Uh, like I said, I switched to Oberon TMR on the Titus instead of Kane's TMR. I thought that would be a really good adjustment because I expected some, you know, potentially some sort of haste when I saw Adelard. Um, I mean, I was running the TMR before I saw Adelard. But once I saw him, I thought 
this was probably a, a good move. You know, from the game two, he had used the haste on Renan, so I thought bringing that was going to be a good adjustment. Um, obviously, the Kane, you know, moving him back, I think was a good move. And you'll notice um, spatial shot, probably a skill you don't see often from lightning. The only reason that came out is it because I was not running the sniper sub job. That is the sub job that I run in most occasions for lightning. I think it's probably her best sub job. But I was very concerned on this map that if she could reach like a dispel spread or an arm shot that she might go for that before she does her pursuit buff. And because of the height range on the sniper sub job, she might be able to do that. So I was like, screw that. I'm turning that off. I want to make sure no matter what she gets her pursuit buff off. And I think it worked out pretty well. So I was happy with my adjustments. I'm happy I ended up winning this game. Obviously, great series, King Delita. Super, super cool guy. I had an absolutely great time, you know, voice chatting with him and hanging out with him. It was a lot of fun. He is no pushover. He might only have six points in the standings, but he puts up a fight every single time. So GG's to him, man. Uh, absolutely awesome series. And let's go ahead and check out the stat leaders after seven weeks and check out the standings as well. All right, guys, the assist leaders after seven weeks, there should be no surprise here. It is Naya of the Gnostics with 46 assists. Absolutely ridiculous stat there. 2.88 assists per game. She's had an incredible win rate. She's just been so damn effective. Number two and three, both of the same team, actually. Little Leela and Aerith just goes to show how strong that Little Leela, Aerith, and Halloween Lucia team has been for Serve Taco and the Superines with 33 and 23 assists, respectively. Zazan of Bearhaman Rhapsody going up again with 22 assists even though he didn't bring the double Jaden, he did use zazan in game number one uni of the shoe puff sweetheart with 21 assists lucio of the gnostics with 19 mastadio of the corpse brigade with 17 Jaden rundall of barium and rhapsody with 16 ravis of shoe puff sweetheart with 14 and several of the demon detectives still holding down that 10th spot with 13 along with a number of other units the only reason he's on there is because he has the assist per game tiebreaker but some absolutely incredible stuff not Naya especially has just been so ridiculously impressive all season. I mean, she is worth so much more than 40 costs. She is an absolutely a steal for her value. Checking out the kill leaders here. We've got Starlight Elena in first place, another uh, member of the Gnostics with 19 kills. Hot on her tail, though, Lucia Halloween of the Supreens with 18 kills. She is trying to uh, catch up there and try and take that kill leader spot. My Little Leela the Bold in third place with 14. Jaden Rundall and Aliyah Rundall and Glacella Flagbear, all with 13 kills tied in fourth place there. Summer Jaden with 12 kills. Skull Hall of the Gnostics along with Zoma and Glacella was Zet of the Shoe Puff Sweetheart and Pineapple Pizza all with 11 kills. And obviously the moment we've been waiting for you guys is the standings. Now I made a couple of things here of just like little adjustments showing so officially three teams have clinched the toilet bowl and basically what that means is they are eliminated from the playoffs um, but we are going to run some sort of toilet bowl we're not 100 percent sure of how that's going to look but the teams that do not make the playoffs will be able to compete in that and the winner of that will be the toilet bowl winner and i think it'll just be a fun thing to do for those teams that don't make the playoffs because i know sometimes if you can't make the playoffs the end of the season can be kind of a bummer um, and we are going to make the seeding for the toilet bowl i think matter quite a bit um, so winning more games right now definitely matters and definitely helps so even if you can't make the playoffs if you end up at five six seven spot or something like that that can help you out a lot but the main event here looking at the playoffs coppola and the gnostics have officially clinched a playoff berth i mean i don't think we were you know surprised or concerned that he wouldn't make the playoffs but he has officially clinched it no matter what even if he doesn't get another point the rest of the last two weeks he has clinched a spot major x and the shoe puff sweetheart surprisingly have not technically clinched yet um he does need a little bit more he i think one or two more points will pretty much guarantee him um, that he makes it but you know I, I don't think we have any concerns about him not making the playoffs he's sitting there in second place with 19 points he does play coppola and the gnostics the final week so i will say i believe he plays willy goats next week if willy goats was going to make the playoffs he basically has to pull off uh, a win against the shoe puff sweetheart and then i think also sand rooster and bohemian rhapsody to put himself at 19. machin x would have to get two owed by willy and two owed by coppola and basically willy would be able to jump him um but yeah it'll be interesting i think machin x probably a safe bet to make the top four but he's not technically clinched yet in third place sand rooster and bohemian rhapsody Started the season 02, has won five straight series since. He's been, you know, incredibly impressive. The team has looked very, very good to this point. Um, you know, I expect good things going out here on out, you know, the rest of the time as well. 
And here's where it gets inter interesting. So I actually moved up. If the playoffs started right now, I would technically be the fourth seed. Um, I know this looks weird. I, I've said this before because I am plus two in my total game win loss, but I do have the head-to-head -head tiebreaker over Surf Taco and the Supereens, which is our first tiebreaker that we use for the playoffs. So if the playoffs started right now, I would be fourth, but I don't have any room to work with. I have to keep winning because Surf Taco is tied with me currently with 14 points and Willie Goats is not far behind with 13. And even all smoked up in the Gumi Gods is in the conversation with 11 points. So there you guys have it. Black Sheep Knights with six points, Pineapple Pizza with a four, and Storm Reborn with zero. That's pretty much the wrap-up of the standings of seven weeks of the Rundall Division. Just to go over some of the games that we have over the last couple weeks, um, like I said, you know, Sand Rooster and Bohemian Rhapsody, I know he plays Willie Goats in the Corpse Brigade, I think, next week. So that should be a good matchup. Um, no, I'm sorry. I think they play the final week, actually. The Gnostics and the Shoebuff Sweetheart play the final week. Um, the Supereens and Coppola actually play next week. So the Supereens, in order to make the playoffs, he's got an uphill battle trying to take on that very top team in our league. And uh, I myself, I play against Pineapple Pizza and the Gumi Gods the last two weeks. So I know Gumi Gods are trying to make it in too. And in order to make it, he's going to have to beat me to try and pass me up as well. So it should be a really, really awesome last couple of weeks. These first seven weeks have been a lot of fun. I've been really enjoying it. I'm hoping that I get to keep into that top four and trying to make the playoffs. I've uh, been doing a lot better this season compared to last season. I'm very excited about that. I have also used a lot of different team comps compared to how I did last season. So that's been a lot of fun too. I've been really enjoying the format and the changes that we made for this season. I think overall they were good adjustments. We're obviously always going to try and tweak it and make it as best as we can. Uh, but yeah, it's been awesome. So anyway, that's all I have for you guys for the Rundall Division Week 7 video. Tomorrow is going to be the Heinler Division Week 7 video, so make sure you don't miss that as well. But you guys have a wonderful day.